we can literally just click one of these. So if I wanted the Blotato poster, all right, I can just click that, paste it in here and boom, I've got it in my workflow. And I actually, you see how I have this help with one node? That's because I have this node here selected, okay? So now if I click that, it's gonna take all that information from that node, okay? So I'm just gonna drag it, it's just the AI agent right here. And we'll just have to wait a little sec here because it does have to go through a bit of a thinking process and you want it to, you want it to be giving you really, really good results. All you have to do is just click optimize prompt, okay? So all these prompts, like if I generate them, they're already gonna be pretty optimized overall. All right, so let's just jump right into it. So if you wanna download this, go to the website. I'm gonna have this down below and we're just gonna click on install extension, okay? You can go through the website as well, test out all the little features. Um, you know, I do have all the little generate prompts and pretty much everything here works as well. So you can actually click on things. And once you get everything downloaded, you wanna be going to the Chrome extensions. I'm actually on Brave, but it's the same thing. I'll have everything in the actual um, installation uh, section as well. And we wanna go there. And what we wanna do is we wanna click on developer mode. Okay, so we wanna to toggle this on and then we're just gonna to go to load unpacked and we're gonna click that and we'll have the disk folder and you just wanna open that up and that will show you NA10 boy right here or you know wherever it is on your Chrome extension page and everything should be good to go. Now from there, just add it to your little bar up here. You can open it up. This is where you're gonna be putting in your API key. Okay, so choose what you want. If you wanna use OpenAI, if you want to use Anthropic with Claude or Gemini, I recommend though that you use Claude. So this feature here is called the Structured Library. So it's just a little plus sign right here. We can click this. Now we can just click anything we want here, okay? And we can actually make our own structures so that we can take them to other workflows and start to build workflows really, really fast, okay? So once we're in here, let's say now on my whole MCP server, all right, paste that in, boom, there it is you know, we're done in two seconds, okay? So let's get rid of that. I also just threw in um, some little simple ones here as well, just like a little text classifier, you know, really nice and simple um, because everything's already set up, okay? So we don't actually have to go in and configure our models and all the categories. Well, we do have to configure the categories, but I mean, I've already set it up here, so you can literally just type it in and, you know, connect all the connections. Um, what we also have, this feature here, ignore this for now, this is a new feature that I'm coming out. This will be uh, for the community, okay? So this will be actually building workflows uh, with AI, but for the actual AI agent here, okay? So this is not just like a little simple um, AI agent or, you know, like customer support. This actually has, at the moment, it has five agents, okay? All within the one chat UI. So. What I mean by that is, is that if I open this up and I ask, let's say I give it a question like, what's a 401 error? Okay, so that's like an error question, okay? So I'll send that off. Now this will be also Claude 4 that is replying to you. So it's gonna go through a little bit of a thinking process and everything like that. I haven't added that in the chat UI because you know it'll take up a lot of room as well. Um, but you can see up here, this gets routed now to my or to NA10 boys troubleshooting agent. Okay, so now you know obviously we get the reply here as well. Uh, but now let's say I wanted something to do with workflows. Okay, what's a good workflow to build for a beginner? Maybe something like that. Okay, so now it's actually going to get routed to another agent which is gonna be a workflow agent. So you'll see here in a second. So I actually have an orchestrator who's then routing things around. Yeah, that's pretty much how that works anyway. It's a lot kind of behind the scenes. Um, but you can see here, we're getting routed to our workflow agent, okay? Then we also have ones related to code. We also have just general agents, you know, just for your simple questions about day-to-day -day things, or even if I just said, how are you, okay? Those kind of questions, not, not necessarily like just those kind of questions, but more of your general kind of questions are gonna be going to the general agent, okay? So the reason why I say that is because all of these agents are specialized in what they do. These aren't just, oh, it's just a single agent that just answers any question, you know, from Claude or something like that. No, these are all specialized agents and a lot of people don't really get that. They just think it's just some AI that's in there and that's it, end of story. No, this is actually a multi-agent um, chat that I've built here, okay? So we're actually accessing specializations for each of our queries and tasks and help that we need 
at that given time as well. Now, if I want to change the UI for this chat as well, I can just jump over to the um, little extension up here. Just click on NA10 boy. And I can come over here and I can just click on like light mode. You know, if you don't like the green, apparently a lot of people don't like the green, you know, but um, I don't mind it personally. But we have the light mode as well. Or we can just go with the dark mode. Okay, so that's a nice dark mode. And we can also do things like if I just get, um, I'll just say, give me random JavaScript code. I have no idea. But we can also copy the actual uh, code directly from the chat as well. Okay, so I'll just show you that when it brings it up. All right, so we got that reply. And yeah, you know, as I said, uh, it's given us a lot here. <laughs> so maybe don't prompt it with something like that. But we can see right over here, we have the code blocks. Okay, so that's allowing us to see our code nice and easily within the chat UI. Now, obviously, we can just, you know, just highlight that copy or, you know, just like you would normally do. But very easily, we can just go up here, click on copy. Okay, so if I just, you know, for instance, this one right here, and there we go, we have the actual code from here from this code block, we actually have it accessible. Now we're going to chuck it straight into a code node. And another thing, like I mentioned before, this is going to our integration agent. Okay, so this agent here uh, specializes in coding in uh, getting you know, your API set up and things like that as well. Let's have a look at one other thing over here as well. So if I actually open up, let's say an AI agent, okay, and I'm just going to close this up. And I'm just going to open up with the prompt right here. Now, if I open up the Ask Boy here again, and I actually, you see how I have this help with one node? That's because I have this node here selected. Okay. So now if I click that, it's going to take all that information from that node. Okay. So I'm just going to drag it. It's just the AI agent right here. And you can see right here, all of those parameters, okay, from that actual AI agent has been inserted into the chat as well. Okay. So you can see right here, you know, obviously we have the, the name, the type parameters, like the uh, chat input. Um, and then we have the system message as well, which says not set. And technically it does have a little system message in there, but this is, yeah, because it's the default one. Now here we can get all the information from that actual, uh, and for that node as well from the workflow agent, because the workflow agent is one that specializes in actual, you know, nodes and workflows and things like that. So if you've seen my previous videos, you probably saw that I had like, it was just like a right click and you could just click like this. Now I've changed everything where we have buttons. Okay. So great thing is if I delete all that, these buttons get deactivated. Okay. So you're not going to be accidentally clicking them or anything like that. So what we can do to generate a prompt. Okay. I can just say, create a prompt for a Gmail agent with three tools, get emails, get uh, send email and reply to email, keep it short and add constraints following best practices. Something like that, right? Now just click on generate prompt. So here we have it done. Okay, so we have our little Gmail agent, okay, for email oper operations within NA10 workflows. Uh, we have the tools, which I mentioned, you know, in my initial prompt. Um, get an email, send emails, reply to emails, and yada, 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 okay? Now, from here as well, or if you have, like, existing AI agents and you want to optimize them a little bit further, but if we want to optimize them, okay, this is going to just shorten things down a bit, okay, and kind of put them into, like, like you see right here, bullet points, where we just have tools, required actions, restrictions, response format. So it's not always necessarily going to be in that exact structure. It depends on the prompt that you have as well, okay? But this is just making things a lot more uh, compact, which then reduces tokens, which then uh, reduces latency and it reduces costs. Now, if I just jump over here and let's just make a little random one here. So I'll just say, uh, yeah, let's go with a HTTP and extract. Okay. So obviously we can just click code node as well, but this way I get the HTTP requests and an extract. Okay. So this is great because if I already had pre-configured HTTP requests with, you know, certain APIs that I commonly use, right? I could have saved those in the structured library so that any workflow I go to, or if I'm building for a client or whatever the hell I'm doing, right? We could just easily access them, boom, chuck it in there, paste it in, and we're done in seconds. So the great thing about this as well is that you see that I have extract all items from these inputs using no indexes. Now let's just create some really random code just to show you like what we can do, 
Okay. Hey, what the hell am I doing? So I'm just going to get a little manual trigger. I'm going to put them over here just so we can actually run it. And I'm going to, I tell you how random this is. Okay. I'm going to say, uh, output a random animal name depending on the day of the week and based on <laughs> the amount of letters within each name times uh, multiply that by 3.2 something random like that I don't even know what I'm doing but this is why I just want to show you how random we can be and yet it still works so now once I've got that in there I'm gonna click on generate code so you could probably see as well I've um, redone the uh, actual notifications as well okay so everything's a lot more smooth and nice but anyway we can see right here right now uh, we have everything set up here with a lot of random animals in there and if I output this there we go today we get a dog day of the week is uh, one letter count is three and then if that's multiplied by three point uh, three point two it's a nine point you know <laughs> you wouldn't ever do that in your life you know, you, the first time you probably see it here, okay? But this is just what I mean. I've been refining this agent because this is, again, don't forget, this is another agent again. This is not even the agents that we saw before in the chat. This is another agent that I built again. So I've actually had to refine its bloody system prompt over and over again to, you know, ensure that the code that it outputs is actually working and running. Um, and that's a very important thing because I think a lot of uh, other users, you know, on YouTube, you know, other creators, we're just suggesting, oh, go to ChatGPT or just go to Claude. It's not enough, okay? You have to be able to explain to, you know, Claude or to um, to ChatGPT and all those other large language models uh, based on the limitations that NA10 also has and what modules NA10 has access to. I know you'll get a lot more on self-hosting, but if you're on cloud, for instance, you don't have much, okay? So you do have to give those limitations as well. Now... Once we go back here, I'm just going to go over here. And another one we can do is, you know, when you build out your uh, HTTP request, right? And some APIs require you to have like a large JSON body. Okay, so I'll just give you, I'm not going to write out a really long one. But you can see right here, we have the JSON body right here. Okay, so let's just say I, you know, pasted something in from an API documentation. And I paste it in there. And I kept going, you know, you have a JSON, JSON problem, right? You know, something's wrong. And you're looking through it and you're thinking, what the hell is wrong with this? Like you're looking through it, there's commas are there. But it's, it's one little character that's missing or that shouldn't be there that breaks everything. So what we can do with this as well. So I'll just make, you know, really, really simple one here. Um, let just say like this, all right? And I'm going to purposely, you know, make an error, okay? So I'm just going to, we'll just do this, you know, because if I just think too much, I won't get anything done. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to add a few things in here, okay? And you, if you are aware of this as well, you'll see that I already have errors in here. But that's the whole point, because we want to be using this button right here. This is a fixed JSON button. So if I click this now, this issue here, it's gone. There we go, okay? So what's actually happened here is that it's added in the comma. Now, technically for the number, since this is actually not really um, that well defined, let's just call this views. Now let's see the difference as well. Fix JSON. There we go, it's changing again. Now the reason for that is because some numbers can be in quotes, okay, and some can't. Generally for something like views, you won't have quotes. They won't be within the quotes. But if you have something like an ID number, okay, that can actually be in a quote. All right. So this is also understanding that, but it's also based on the actual name of the parameter as well for it to better understand. Now, jumping over here again, we'll open up a set node. Okay. If I click on JSON where we have the, um, you know, where we can actually put like everything in here just like a JSON body, we can do the exact same things. But in this here, we can actually make them as well. So I could say something like 10 parameters, um, prompts, one, two, three, four, etc. Okay, and I'm just going to click on generate JSON. And you'll see we have 10 prompts, 
all done. Boom. There we go. Okay. Now, if I want to fix this, because technically um, this is actually, this is already correct, right? In the string here, the string itself is like a placeholder, like for us to know that, you know, we have to put something in there. Uh, if you were using a parser, it would be a different story. But just for this example here, now I'm just going to break this. Okay. And I'm just going to do that. And I just want to show you how quick it is to fix everything up. Not to say that you're going to do that, but just, just, you know, just assume you made a mistake somewhere. So we're going to click on fix JSON and watch it. Boom. It's fixed just like that. Okay. So it's really nice and easy. It's very fast. It's very quick. And I mean, this saves you so much time to do. Okay. So this again, I know I'm getting ridiculous sound, sounding like this, but this again is an actual JSON agent that I've made as well. So this is not the same agent as a coding agent, as the chat agent. This is a JSON agent, okay? And its sole purpose is to just fix and generate JSON based on the structure that I've given it, okay? Now, if we jump over here as well, we do have the structured output passes, okay? And, I, you know, I won't have to show you everything here, but it's exactly the same thing. OK, so if we want to use structured output passes and let's just say, for example, you know, same kind of thing again. This one here, again, we could just set that up. Boom, our structured pass is ready to go. OK, so it's as simple as that. Now we can actually just go down here as well, because let's say, for example, you know, what? I need to add two more parameters. OK, and I need views and likes. All right, I could just write at the bottom there. Now it's generating. There we go. It's in there as well. Okay, so it's as simple as that to, you know, start getting your, your structured output passes, all the JSON set up, getting all your set notes set up, fixing all the JSON, getting your AI agents set up, optimizing their prompts. I mean, you know, it's honestly so easy. And I'll just show you really quickly as well how we can actually save them as well. So if we just copy this, Okay, so we're just copying this, just like selecting them all. Okay, I'm gonna press Control C. So see, copy the clipboard over here. I'm gonna press a plus, and I'm gonna click on Create. Give it a name. So we'll just say Test. Give it a little icon, just so we know what each and every one is. And we're just gonna paste that in there. Okay. So once we copy those nodes on NA10, it's, we're actually copying the JSON. Okay. So that JSON is gonna be pasted into here. Then we can click on Add Structure, and then that add that adds another little, um, what do you call this? I don't even know. It adds another little thing here. Okay. And then from there, we can just copy that again, come over here. And now we have another one as well. Now, another thing is the importing. So if you want to import some as well, you can import them directly in here. Okay. Or you can import the JSON and we can also do export. So if we already have like 20, 30 different structured library structures, sorry, in here, and we want to save them all just as a backup. We can just export. That's going to export to a file. And then we can reference that file. We can import that file as well anytime that we want. Okay. So just showing you that as well. Um, I'm just going to save that. And I'm just going to, you know, just delete these even. Okay. Just to show you that nothing is here now. These are the default ones, by the way. Um, and I'm going to go to import. I'm going to click here. I'm going to select the file. All right. Now you see here I have three structures and I apologize for that. I haven't changed the font colors, but let me just show you with a black. There we go. So we ha I have three structures here. Okay. Zero favorites because I didn't add any before and import all and boom, they're back in here again and we're good to go. So that's going to be the end of the video anyway. Now I know it's taken me a while to get the video around, uh, but this is actually, I put in a lot of work to get this up and running. And I'm doing this all alone as well. Okay, so you know, trying to do all the work and everything else, and it's um, it's taken me quite a bit to get everything together. So I hope you enjoy it anyway. If you do want to support me and what I do, please join the school as well. I'd really appreciate that because I'm going to be giving even more premium access to this with different uh, features and everything like that that'll be coming out within the next month. Um, you know, I update this all the time. Okay. So this is not just like a one-time update kind of thing. I've been updating this a lot, even in the last week. Okay. So we've already gone up like nine versions in the last week alone, but I'll be essentially, yeah, um, putting out all the premium stuff on the school, but everything that you see here that you've, um, you know, seen me do is going to be available to you right now. Just see the website down below and enjoy.